Silas Nacido was deemed ineligible to participate in, in college football on his team, Baylor University. Why? Nacido had has always struggled with a home life in his native California, and during the off season, he accepted shelter and food from complete strangers. According to the National Collegiate Athletic Association, this qualifies as improper benefits. And because he used his football status to gain these benefits, it compromises his integrity, gives him unhealthy incentives, and most of all, violates his amateur status as a player. What is amateurism? Essentially, the NCAA uses it um, as the purpose behind all their athletics and all their sports. So, it basically is um, merely a um, recreation designed to enrich and educate um, players. Uh, and that's the point of all athletics under the NCAA. However, the education and better, betterment of the players does not come first in the context of college football. In college football, many state universities have become sports and entertainment factories. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about how players should have rights as employees in college football, how universities can improve players' education, and what you can do to improve this issue. Kane Coulter, entering Northwestern University, wanted to become a doctor. Quickly he realized that his obligation as the quarterback of the team didn't allow him enough time to take all the courses he needed to. However, after his junior season, he um, sought for the National Labor Relations Board to recognize the football team as a group of employees and so they would be able to bargain with the NCAA and the um, Northwestern University. At first, the NL NLRB accepted his request on the basis that most college football players um, go to school with only the obligation to play football and with no academic qualifications. However, after Northwestern brought in um, the big guns, along with the NCAA, the decision was reversed. However, the grievances of Coulter still remain in that um, the big competitive schools playing football usually is a commitment of um, over 250 days a year, which is more than the average American works in a year. And also, the economic dependence that he had on the university and that he had to fulfill his obligation to play football to fulfill his scholarship. Otherwise, they could withdraw the scholarship and he would no longer be able to receive an education from the university. Devin Ramsey is suing his alma mater, North Carolina University, um, for not giving him an education. An independent investigation of North Carolina shows multiple instances of academic fraud, but more alarmingly that um, the NCAA, who checks these players' eligibility, um, clearly was not doing a good enough job because it was pretty evident that a lot of these classes were not real classes. Um, a lot of the players' tests were somehow generated that they never took. Um, and part of the problem lays in that the NCAA checks eligibility through the athletic department at these schools. So not through the deans or the professors, but through the athletic department. So there tends to be obviously fudging of the facts. Um, and another huge thing is that even if you were to complete all the requirements to stay academically eligible to play football, um, there's the 80% rule, which means that you only have to create, you only have to complete 80% of requirements towards a degree to remain eligible. So if you remain eligible through all four years and play college football, it doesn't guarantee your degree because you um, have only completed a minimum of 80% of your um, requirements towards that degree. 
Um, so, what can you do? I mean, this seems like a huge issue and um, pretty distant, so like you guys are just sitting here like, wow. Um, but the first thing you can do is kind of be aware, obviously, of um, the issue with these athletes in college football. Um, and there's usually, there's tons of stories, stuff like this happens a lot. Um, and if you hear about it, you know, don't dismiss it as another like irrelevant sports story, but really look at it as an institutional problem in America. Um, and you can read and share the website that I'll be creating um, that illustrates uh, the, the real scale of this problem and what can be done about it, um, possible solutions. And um, this is a kind of issue that doesn't really change quickly, but with kind of discussion and um, sustained collective pressure over time, obstacles can be overcome with it. All right. Are you finished? No. Yeah, I mean, I kind of designed it to do like the questions then dessert, but I can, I don't know. All right, so go ahead. Let's do questions then. That's fine. Question. <laughs> do you think that other university-run organizations should be able to apply for employee benefits too? Like, for example, the Harvard Lampoon? Um, or just sports? Well, within the context of college football, um, it's such a lucrative business that that's like the main issue is that like the players are, um, the universities are making millions and millions of dollars because of these players and these players are basically funding universities entire athletic departments and in that way it's kind of unfair to them and that they don't have a lot of rights bargaining their hours, medical insurance, um, endorsement deals and they really just uh, sh should have more power in the role that they play. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how I was looking at it in terms of like the scale of the industry. Let's take another question. Anybody has one? Yeah, okay. I know um, a lot of kids get into schools through scholarships for sports. So would that have to go away then so that when they get into the school they can meet the academics? Because I know like there's a lot of sports players that are below the school, but since they are good at sports, they're, they get called into the school. So like, would that have to change in order to create more quality, I guess? Yeah, so um, there's a huge difference between like um, the revenue sports, like college football, college basketball, and then other sports that um, aren't revenue sports. And you see with big universities that the qualifications for um, college football players and basketball players get lower and lower um, because they want to bring the best and the best players in. Um, so I would say no. Um, I think there's always going to be like a little bit of maybe a discrepancy, but the level that it's at is that college football players going to like Ohio State are on like fifth grade reading levels. Um, and it just shows that there's really no regard for any academic qualifications. Um, and that's what needs to be changed. It's just like the polar, um, totally inexplicable stuff like that. Yeah. Let's go to you, sir. All right. So in 2014, the Alabama Athletic Department made $165 million, more than all National Hockey Association teams, and more than 25 out of 30 National Basketball Association teams. So I'm telling you that the market of college football is not comparable to professional sport. It is one of a professional sport. And what enables um, the treatment of players and the exploitation is all the consumers and all of you um, who turn on ESPN on Saturday to watch the 12 hour coverage or wear your Alabama sweatshirt or Florida Gator Crocs. Um, so just be conscious of that.